The history of U.S. aircraft carriers began over 100 years ago in 1910. However, the first full-fledged tactical and operational aircraft carrier formations of the U.S. Navy were formed before the outbreak of World War II. Now the American fleet has 11 aircraft carriers, 10 Nimitz class, and one Gerald Ford class. Another giant was launched, the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, which is called the aircraft carrier of the 21st century. The USS John F. Kennedy is the second in a series of 10 Gerald R. Ford class ships. The new aircraft carriers will replace the Nimitz class ships that have been in service since 1975. Aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy is the grandest and most expensive aircraft carrier in the history of mankind. At least $13 billion was spent on its creation. The final figure will be even higher. The service life of the ship should exceed 50 years. In addition to airplanes, the aircraft carrier is equipped with medium-range RIM 162 ESSM anti-aircraft missiles, ship-based anti-aircraft missile and anti-aircraft artillery systems. In essence, it is an armed floating island. The mere presence of such a ship in the water instantly changes the political situation in the world. All these facts attract everyone's attention, so John F. Kennedy deserves a separate big story. So it all started when U.S. Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mabus, announced that the next Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carrier would be named John F. Kennedy. According to the U.S. Navy Ship Naming Convention, aircraft carriers can only be named after U.S. presidents. I must say, that the name John F. Kennedy has already been used in the name of a ship, that is, an American Kitty Hawk-class aircraft carrier. In the movie 2012, it is this aircraft carrier that hits the White House in Washington, D.C., along with a great tsunami wave. The old aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy was the fourth and last in the Kitty Hawk class. The ship served for about 40 years. The ceremony of withdrawal from the fleet took place on August 1, 2007. Despite the fact that aircraft carriers can only be named by presidents, there are exceptions to the naming convention for the U.S. Navy, Nimitz, Enterprises. Design of the new supercarrier began in January 2009. The preparation of the documentation alone cost $374 million. The contract went to Northrop Grumman Corporation. In the fall of 2010, Northrop Grumman began preparations for construction. Steel cutting for the new John F. Kennedy started on February 25, 2011. On August 22, 2015, construction began on the aircraft carrier's keel. On April 30, 2018, a division of Northrop Grumman Corporation, Huntington Ingalls Industries, announced that the ship was 75% complete. After a year and a half, the aircraft carrier was launched. The baptism took place on December 7, 2019. The godmother of the ship was President Kennedy's daughter, Caroline Kennedy. The launching ceremony was attended by over 20,000 people. Officials talked about the power of the American Navy. The supercarrier's abilities are truly amazing. The giant is 1,105 feet long and 256 feet wide. The height of the ship reaches 250 feet. The displacement is 100,000 tons. At the same time, the speed exceeds 30 knots. Such crazy thrust is achieved by using two nuclear reactors, Bechtel A1B. The power of each is 700 megawatts. The new generation A1B reactors operate on the same principle as the reactors for land-based nuclear power plants. The only difference is that their energy is transmitted to four shafts that drive the ship's propellers. These two nuclear units are able to fully cover the electricity demand of a half million city. The navigation autonomy of the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy is limited exclusively by the supply of provisions. As usual, there are food supplies on board, which will be enough to feed more than 4.5 thousand personnel and service personnel for 100 days of sailing. The hull of the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy as a whole differs little from the ships of the Nimitz type. Why change the best? One of the notable differences concerns the deck superstructure, which has been moved closer to the stern. This decision increased the speed of movement of ammunition and aircraft because the area of the takeoff deck increased. In the air wing of John F. Kennedy, there are almost a hundred aircraft for various purposes. 
first of all, the carrier-based fighters FA-18EF Super Hornet and F-35C, which are perfectly suited for the aircraft carrier. Integration with F-35C fighters remained questionable for some time. Initially, the delivery of the aircraft carrier involved a two-stage scheme. First, the basic version, and then additional equipment for integration with F-35C fighters. However, the concern was in vain. Electronic Countermeasures Aircraft EA-18G Growler, Early Warning Aircraft E-2D Hawkeye, and Transport C-2 Greyhound can also be placed on board. In addition, the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy is capable of carrying, and if necessary, using MH-60RS helicopters and drones. The know-how of the new generation aircraft carriers, which include Ford and John F. Kennedy, are the electromagnetic catapults. Recall that earlier steam counterparts were used on American aircraft carrying cruisers. Electromagnetic catapults make the acceleration of the aircraft smoother. As a result, pilots experience less stress, both physically associated with overload and psychological, which translates into lower risk of making a mistake during takeoff. The landing has become no less comfortable. As you know, most aircraft accidents involving carrier-based aircraft occur either during takeoff or landing. To facilitate the landing on the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, an electromechanical aero finisher is used. The deck part of such devices consists of several cables stretched above the deck and connected to drums. When landing on an aircraft carrier, the aircraft have a high speed. The deck is not long enough to slow down. Therefore, carrier-based aircraft are hooked onto one or more ropes using a hook. As a result of the engagement, the speed is damped. In addition to the cable device, the aero finisher system includes a hydraulic brake, a mechanical brake, and electric motors that generate energy for the operation of the entire device. When the aircraft is braking, the control system, using bypass valves, constantly regulates the pressure and fluid flow in the hydraulic braking system. Thanks to this solution, the aircraft decelerates more smoothly. Aero finisher can be configured to receive aircraft of different weights. This gives the prospect that John F. Kennedy will be able to carry sixth generation carrier-based fighters. We have already talked about them in our other video. It is noteworthy that the energy that is generated when the landing aircraft is braking is accumulated for further use. That is, the work of the aero finisher is partially provided by the energy accumulated during the braking of the aircraft. Greta Thunberg should be delighted here. A catapult and an aero finisher are those devices without which an aircraft carrier, and even more so a supercarrier, cannot exist. It may seem like a trifle. In addition, there are no unknown mechanisms or new laws of physics in the operation of these devices. However, the first caveat is the compactness of the system. Let it be an aircraft carrier and a large ship, but this is a ship where every inch of space must work for a common goal. This is the main reason for optimizing already known and reliable technologies. The second nuance concerns the reliability and endurance of the catapult. The electromagnetic catapult allows one to increase the intensity of flights up to 220 per day at peak load. For example, Nimitz is capable of only 120 flights a day. That is, in combat conditions, the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy is almost twice as effective as Nimitz-class ships. Neither Russia nor China has such catapulting and braking technologies. That is why their aircraft carriers, Admiral Kutsinov and Liaoning, which belong to the same type of aircraft carrying cruisers, are not capable of carrying heavy transport aircraft and reconnaissance aircraft with a long takeoff run. Liaoning and Kutsinov are far behind the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy. Russian and Chinese aircraft carriers cannot even match the previous generation of American Nimitz class aircraft carriers. The question arises, why is the United States building new aircraft carriers, each of which will cost at least $13 billion if the old Nimitz-class cruisers are unmatched? It's all about the service life. Before the introduction of the first four, the Americans had not produced new aircraft carriers for over 40 years. The first Nimitz, hull number CVN-68, entered service on May 3, 1975. The most recent Nimitz aircraft carrier, George W. Bush, entered service in 2009, was built using the same technology. Forty years without new ships is a long time in terms of technology continuity. If you do not build new aircraft carriers for a long time, 
then you can get to the point when the existing technologies become very outdated. The emergence of effective means of destruction of floating airfields that the Russian and now the Chinese armies have cannot be ignored. Aircraft carriers have become more vulnerable and using them to maintain world dominance became more difficult. In addition, active American Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are often idle at the world's largest naval base in Norfolk. The reason for the downtime is technical malfunctions. In short, the appearance of John F. Kennedy is entirely justified. Moreover, if you count the construction time of an aircraft carrier, then the Northrop Grumman Corporation division needs to accelerate and release aircraft carriers faster. We will monitor the development of the situation, including the emergence of systems that are capable of withstanding the hypersonic missiles of Russia and China. After all, it's the hypersonic missiles that are the greatest danger to the largest ships in the world.